Hello, folks. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. Today's podcast is with Brian and our buddy James Sylvester, also known as Sly Sylvester on Instagram. On this podcast, they discuss how Sly became a photographer, some of the gear that he uses, uh, how he goes about editing, how he found his own look. They discuss some tips and tricks how to overcome the challenges of uh, filming a hunt. And they answer one of my favorite questions. What's more important, being a hunter or being a good photographer? You're going to enjoy this one. Sly is a cool dude. I myself learned a lot. But before we get to the show, folks, remember, go to mountainops.com, type in the code GRITTY to save at checkout. It's going to be a rotating code. For now, it's free shipping. But like I said, rotating code. It'll be something different in the future. Also, guys, go get yourself some trekking poles. Go to bigsissygear.com. Save yourself 15% on some aluminum bottoms, carbon fiber upper poles. Really tough, ultra lightweight. Love them. And finally, do yourself a favor. Go to heatherschoice.com and get yourself some pack of runes. Or if you want a meal, go get a full meal. But do yourself a favor. Go try out the Amaretto pack of runes. They're life changing, they're amazing. Go we'll check them out. All right, guys, on to the show. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast, folks. I'm your host, Brian Call, and I am joined today by James Sylvester, also known as Sly. On <laughs> yeah, I guess that's that's what people have been calling me. <laughs> <laughs> I know everybody's like, "Oh, I really like Sly." That's he's a great photographer. I'm like, "That's his Instagram handle. His name's not actually <laughs> Sly." Uh, but yeah, uh, I don't. I've, I haven't really gone by that. You know, it is just that my oh, Instagram. Oh, it's handle, time. But, it's time. Yeah. I'm. Just, I just call you Sly when I talk to Brent Gritty yeah. Bowman. I'm like, "Yeah, I got a podcast with Sly today. It's gonna be cool." You know, <laughs> and and really, I feel like I'm sitting down with Keanu Reeves. I mean, like a hundred percent Keanu Reeves right here, dude. Some some a girl just came up to me the other day and said, "What celebrity do you look like?" And I was like, "I have no idea what you're talking about." And she was like, "It's Keanu Reeves." Dude, and I think my look, brother looks like him. But. Right now on the on the screen here, you look like John Wick. <laughs> John Wick. I, I just John, expecting yeah. you to pull out a gun right now. Like and just <laughs> yeah, I love those movies too. Those are awesome. <laughs> uh, for people who don't know you uh, that are listening, uh, James was on my mule deer hunt. It was the first time I met you. This mule deer series we just published, that which has gone gangbusters on YouTube. It's been great. Uh, we did a three-part mule deer series. Ryan Lampers, myself, and you went out into some rugged late-season backcountry and negative 10-degree temps and uh, chased some mule deer. And you, my friend, are a very talented photographer. Thank you. I, I appreciate that, man. It's been um, a lot of years working on it and kind of tweaking and getting better. And uh, yeah, it's been a long time coming for sure. <clears throat> been a- I-, I wanted to get you on the podcast because it was such a killer experience. Plus you're a really cool dude and your content or your photos speak for themselves. You, you do some really, really uh, great photography work. Uh, some of those pictures that you captured of you know, of the box that we took are some of the, my favorite trophy quote unquote trophy shots uh, I've ever had of any animals I've, I've ever hunted. So that says a lot. Cause I've hunted with some pretty dang good photographers, man. Yeah. You've been around definitely a, a lot more than I have. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, that's cool. I mean, yeah, the trophy shots are always kind of a time crunch, you know, especially hunting you guys, you know, usually, um, light and then also processing a deer down, you know, you don't want to take too much time on it. So it's kind of like, a, um, it's kind of a high intensity, moment. you know, time, yeah. right. It's a moment. Like you want to get these shots off and then I want to let you guys get down to business too. So one of the best uh, trophy shot photographers I've, I've been around is, uh, Adam Foss. And I, I think it's because Adam is also you know, a major hunter. So in his mind, he kind of gets it and knows what we're looking for. You know, anytime you can skyline that, that, that those antlers and really showcase the beauty of that animal. And some guys who, who haven't hunted their whole lives, I've noticed they're talented photographers, but when it comes to that particular moment, they don't, they don't quite see what it takes to make a really good shot of that moment. You know? Yeah. I think that is a big part of it. I guess photography wise is you got to know, you know, you want to know what, what looks good, I guess, or what you, in my mind, like it's, it's important to give justice to like the situation, the animal, I mean, to the hunter, all that kind of stuff. So being a hunter helps that because you know, you kind of know what you like, you know, you kind of know what you want to, what you're looking for. Well, I wanted to ask you about that. So I want to talk a little bit today about for people listening, so they know photography, what makes a good photo, you know, how, how do you go about 
you know, framing a shot and getting the shot from the, from just the artistic side of it. And then from the technical side, you know, what are some of those settings you like to use for the more nerdy types? And then what, what is the gear you're actually using? So with the first part here, you've cap you captured some really cool photos on this trip. And some of them are my highest liked photos for, for 2019 on like Instagram and stuff, just through the roof of all the photos I posted for the year. They all like three or four of those rose to the very top of all the photos for the year. And they've only been up for like, since like December 10th, you know, like they were at the end of the year as well. And yet they just rose to the top. And so my question, how do you capture those shots and how, how do you know, you know, is it instinctive for you or, or are there rules you're following? It's, it's instinctive for sure. It's, it's, um, it's like, it's just years of practicing and doing it. And also on these hunts, which it's kind of helps. I mean, we were out there for, you know, 12 days or something like that. And the more I'm shooting out there, the more I get comfortable just with my camera. You know what I mean? Like as you're going on this trip and as you're using, as you're shooting, you just get into a mode where you know what you're looking for. And I know what settings I want to use for situ uh, different situations. That's definitely over the years, like mm -hmm. lower light, you kind of know, you know, I already know where my settings need to be, you know, when, whether to bump up my ISO, you know, your aperture, shutter speed, it all is, it comes pretty natural to me. I know like for, from how the lighting is basically. Yeah. You know, the thing is too, you're not very, uh, like I've been with other photographers that are like, move this, do that, do this. Oh, here, sit here, set that like this. Well, you're just photographing. You're yeah. Just I try to, I try to let you guys do it and it's better. You know, I'm going to get, uh, I'm going to start doing that a little more. I do. Um, cause I did direct Ryan on a few shots where I was like, Oh, and it worked out really well. You know, the well, one where he's open. I it is, but I just, I don't do little... it a lot. And, um, sometimes it's good. And sometimes you need to let what happens happens, I think. Uh -huh. Um, but yeah, a little bit of both and uh, balancing both of that is probably a good idea. So, but yeah, I don't try to direct too much, you know? You, no. What, what do you, how do you make a, uh, you know, what, what makes a good trophy shot, for example, you know, you think it's just a photo of the, the buck you shot, but it's, Right. There's a difference between the ones that just really like jaw stop you. And, 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 and I've seen stuff where people try to make it look bigger than it is. You know, right. they get perspective shots. They, they, or they, they get real fancy, which I'm not a big, huge fan of because it's, it's warping reality a little bit. Right. Um, yeah. A lot of goes, a lot of people use wide angle lenses and stuff like that, which um, I mean, they, they all have their spot in a photography kit, I guess. But um <clears throat> makes a good trophy photo. I think, um, if you can show some of the elements, like for us, it was pretty easy because there were just elements all over the place. You know, when you shot your buck, it was snowing super hard. It was, the, you know, the light was fading and the mountains were rugged. So it just makes my job a lot easier when it's like yeah. that, you know? And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, also different types of shots, like close ups showing details, like your buck had a little bit of velvet on there that was kind of being uh, stripped off still kind of unique focusing on a little bit of variances in in the animal and, you know, showing close ups and some landscape. I mean, mixing it just up. doing all different types of mixing it up and doing all different types of shots. Yeah. Uh, I get a lot of questions about like the night shots and <clears throat> those, those are definitely a little bit tougher. I mean, you might have to direct a little bit more on that. Like if your hunter is moving around pretty fast, you might have to say, Hey, can you hold that for a sec? And just have them slow down because if you're not bringing a flash with you and you're just using uh, headlamps, you know, your shutter speed's going to get low if you want to keep your ISO as low as you can. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got some incredible night shots like that one with lampers holding the, the skinned out head rack there, the, the skull it, yeah. in the dark. I mean, yeah, that one was really cool. I like that one too. I mean, that one was, it's just one of those shots where I was like, oh, we got to do that one. And it's hard too, like those moments, um, you know, doing hunting photography, those moments, you know, like we're way on a mountainside, it's dark, it's cold and everybody wants to try to get back to camp, you know, yeah, and you can totally. be the one that says, hold up, we got to take a shot. You know, we got to take a moment to get a photograph here. Well, it really helps when you have, um, guys like me and Ryan who value the end product. So we're yeah. very patient with the process of capturing it, you know, but I've hunted yeah, with no some doubt. people that are like. They don't want to stop for the camera, man. They don't want to stop for nope. the video guy. They don't want to take yeah. the time. They just want to yeah. do their thing. And it's like, you get back from a trip like that and 
there's not very much to 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 go on to go on because yeah, yeah because there wasn't a vision it's, of yeah but there's definitely a team effort and that that's something that probably should be discussed before you go i mean obviously there's a balance to it you don't want to disrupt the hunt at all but um there is times where you need to take a minute and get a photo and definitely works out in the end. It's worth it in the end. When you're taking a, a trophy shot, are there certain things you don't want to capture or, or that you're kind of avoiding that you don't like? Um, pet peeves is yours. Pet peeves. Yeah. Um, I don't like a mouth open on the uh, animal. So that's something. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to see that when you're shooting a lot or, you know, you'll go back later and you'll see a few photos that you don't like and you just won't use them, you know, but it is something to keep in mind to, uh, you know, make the animal look appropriate, make them look good. But I mean, other than that, um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I just kind of go with it when it's for its own trophy. Photos. Yeah, you're one of those people, artistic people that annoy others because when people ask you, okay, like, how do I get the best shot? You're like, you're not real analytical on this. You just instinctively no. take shots. Yeah. And that's, and that is like my, <laughs> my motto is keep it simple, man. I do try to keep it simple. Same with like uh, my settings and everything. Like I know what I want out of a photo and my main focus is to nail focus. Cause that is, if it, I had a pet peeve in photography, it's nailing focus. Cause if I don't nail focus, I feel like I won't even use that photo. You know what I mean? I just, I throw it away because, um, <clears throat> It's just something that I think that has to be there. So That's um, same with if I'm doing, yeah, same with like if I'm doing wildlife or anything like that, like nailing focus is a top priority for me. How do you nail focus? Because I've gotten home, thought I had a lot of great shots looking at the little photo <laughs> screen and I get home and it's really soft. The photo is not crisp and it really is a disappointment. Um, some of it is going to be your gear and your, your lenses. I mean, like I used to have some gear that wasn't as good as the stuff I have now. And I knew what setting that it was the sharpest. Like I had the Canon original, uh, one to 400 and I used it for wildlife. Mm -hmm. And, um, I knew that if I put it on, <clears throat> you know, F eight or F 7.2 or something like that, or I forget what actually aperture that was, but uh, you know, somewhere in F eight region like it would be really sharp so you'd yeah. bump up your app but my, my gear now is really good so i'm able to push it a lot more like you know i use the 24 to 70 a lot for canons the 2.8 lens and um i shoot that all over the place i mean shoot it at 2.8 i shoot it at f4 and then when i'm doing landscapes i try to um i mean i'll shoot some at f you know like those apertures but like a lot of times i'll bump it up i'll go f9 f11 and even further depending on you know the situation yeah yeah, it captures just more of the landscape. So sometimes you're doing that. Yeah. When you're taking a trophy picture, what is your most common aperture setting for that? It depends. Like, um, <clears throat> so with you guys and how the light was, my, I was shooting uh, 2.8 the whole mm -hmm. time pretty much because, you know, my ISO was bumped up to probably uh, 2,000 to 2,500. Mm -hmm. And so um, that's kind of where I want to be. we shoot at. everything at dark just, just before. That's I was saying that. I was like, <laughs> one of these days they're going to shoot one with some good lighting. But, um, yeah, every time it's, it's like dark is coming. Swear, whenever Ryan and, and I kill, it's like and very it's rare that it's And it's like a real light. rush to kind of get – you know, to get those shots. And Ryan's like that in general, man. He's always, he's always getting stuff at bad times. And it's like, Oh, this is horrible. In, in a blizzard. Yeah. Blizzards. <laughs> I mean, yeah. So, um, another question I had for you was, you know, how do you manage your camera in those kind of conditions? Uh, how, how do you handle the, the lens getting, you know, hammered in the wind and the rain and stuff? And how do you keep the <clears> lens from, cause the spots on a camera lens, it's just killer. Yep. So like, I'm really finicky about that. And I'm literally, I know you probably noticed I'm literally cleaning my camera. <laughs> you and I are the, the opposites. I got spots yeah. all over my lens and yeah. you know, you're um, cleaning it every 10 minutes. Well, that's the difference though. With, I think with film, it's a little bit different. Like you don't have to worry about it as much and, and really you could fix it with photography, you know, um, mm -hmm. you can fix it in post, but I, it is a pet peeve of mine. I clean my lens a lot. If, um, but I like shooting in weather, man. I like shooting when it's raining. Yeah. I like shooting when it's snowing and my gear is weather sealed. And I do throw a lens coat on top of it too, as well, if it's raining hard or something, but you definitely want to shoot in those situations where it's the toughest. And, um, <clears throat> I mean, those are going to probably make your better photos, you know? And, uh, what gear are you using for people that are listening? Like what, what so is... I get, I get asked this question probably more than all, but I'm using, I'm using Canon gear and I'm using a 5d Mark three and I'm shooting, um, I shoot the 24 to 70 a lot. I shoot the 70 to 200 a lot. And then I have a one to 400 that I use um, quite a bit for uh, wildlife. I love all the lenses. I love the camera, 
But, you know, there's other companies. I mean, unless you're making a big living off this and you're making really good money, it's it's a pretty big choice to switch camera setups. You know, I just looked into Sony the other day and for me to switch what I have now into something else, it's well over 10 grand. So um, you have to kind of balance out it with, with uh, what you're doing and what you're bringing in. Yeah, yeah. But, no um, doubt. It was painful when I switched from Canon to Sony. It was brutal. But the yeah. reason I switched was video capability. Yep, for video. Yeah, video. I mean, Sony's definitely got some stuff out. And, uh, you know, Sony's are awesome. And, I mean, all the companies are really good, though. Sony, I would say, has the upper hand right now. And I think they're the hot ticket because um, they're just – they got some features that, you know, other cameras aren't having. But um, if like you it. have a camera set up right now, <clears throat> um, you know – and it's capable, like my five Mark three is, it's kind of old, you know, and I, yeah. you know, and people are kind of like, Oh, you know, you know, upgrade, but like it shoots great photos. Like it's an awesome yeah. camera and, uh, yeah, until I'm, stuff, every it's amazing. Yeah. There's yeah, yeah, it's silly. The, the amount of firepower we have nowadays with camera gear, uh, right. is silly. <clears throat> we, it's really good. So, um, you know, practice with what you have, if anything, maybe upgrade your lenses, I'd say, mm -hmm. but, um, practice what you have, get really comfortable with it. I mean, shoot a lot. That's kind of what has done it for me, I guess. It's just practice. Because I don't think, um, you know, I was all that good in the beginning, dude. If I look at photos I took years ago, I'm like, oh, my God, what were you thinking? And a lot of photos can be made or uh, made or broken, you know, post. Well, So it's important to focus on your editing and, you know, and try to balance that because um, you can ruin your photo, <laughs> you know. So when Ryan uh, said, hey, I'm, uh, I'm, we're going on this hunt and I'd like to have – you know, I, I, we're, uh, we're going to have James Sylvester come along, Sly, and and he's going to take pictures on on this mule deer hunt. And I was like, um, who is he? And does he have – so I went to your Instagram and I was like, okay, he's talented. Um, but I was like, Ryan, can he keep up, you know? Because that's like the problem with, yeah. with a lot of hunts I've been on with photographers. There's a lot of talented guys out there, but they can't. They're not mentally tough enough or physically tough enough, some of them, to keep up and be there to get the photos and the stuff that we need. And they're really not going to contribute much other than being a photographer to the rest of the hunt. They're not good at spotting game. They're not good at, you know, the actual hunt. They, ha they haven't had a lot of experience there with, the, you know, with the exception of someone like Adam Foss, who, who's phenomenal. That's a that's the concern is like there's a guy that's really good at photography but maybe isn't able to do the other aspects of the teamwork that comes with being on a hunt, you know, and right. He's like he can handle it. He can handle <clears throat> it. And so that was kind of refreshing and then sure enough we got up there and you're tough as nails, you never complain. You're the easiest person in the world to get along with. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I mean, I'm glad to hear that. I feel like that. Like, um, I feel like if people meet me, they're like, oh, he's a nice dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I like, I like being out there. I mean, to me, I like it more now than I ever have, man. It's, um, you, you never, know, it's, you never complained ever. No, I and, actually like it. I actually, yeah. I like, and that's the thing with Ryan too. Like a lot of people, um, Ryan loves to be out there. And this is a thing I do with everybody I hunt with really when it, when the condition conditions get super tough, it's freezing cold, you know, it's blizzarding or whatever. I look at people and their facial expressions and you guys are always smiling. You guys are always on task. You guys, you guys like this stuff, you know what I mean? And, and that's what I like about it. It's like, it is tough. It's supposed to be tough. And, you know, it's just, it's part of the enjoyment of it really. You know, with the exception of my daughters and even them, I have a hard time with, I, I do not, I'll just be frank. I don't handle people well that are David, Debbie Downers on a hunt. Like, yeah. Nobody I, likes that. When, when they're walking around, they're kind of mopey and I can tell they want to go home. It's a 12 yeah. day hunt and they're on day six and they're like, yeah. they just want to quit. They're done. Yeah. It happens um, a bit. You know, they're just tired. I don't have patience for them. I'll, I just yeah. push them. I'm like, get off your butt. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. I, I lose my patience, really. Ryan doesn't say anything. He just leaves them behind. He does. He'll leave you behind. That's why when I go with Ryan, I'm like, you know, you better be on your game. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to get left behind. <laughs> he just, he'll just pack up and go. And you'll yeah. be, you know, you'll be wandering around wondering where he went. He loses patience too, but he's just not verbal about it. Right. Um, so it was really cool because you were right there the whole time. And you're working hard with us, setting up tents, you know, getting camp ready, putting stoves together, whatever it might be, gathering wood. We're all contributing. That's that's a big deal. It was interesting 
you and Ryan are actually related. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I got your story on, you know, how you got involved in hunting because you know, apparently you were not really a hunter until recently. Well, um, 2009 ish, I got into hunting. So the story really is my dad was a big time outdoorsman. Mm -hmm. He was in, he was in the Marines, you know, 30 years, 28 years, but he grew up in Maine, big time hunter. And he'd take us hunting. Like we had a whole bow set up in my backyard when I was a kid, we'd shoot bows, you know, it was hard for him to have the patience to take us out. You know, I mean, we were, we'd, he'd take me out and I'd be loud and he'd be like, geez, I can't get anything with you guys here. And, and so it was kind of limited and it's a bummer because, you know, he ended up, he passed away when I was in my early twenties and he really, he, we really um, never got to kind of go hunting as adults. And I think he would have probably enjoyed it. But um, we did do a lot of fishing when I was growing up. And then so um, honest thing is like when I was younger, I was, um, you know, I was in a lot of other stuff and I just um, I didn't get back into hunting until probably 2009. And it was because of Ryan, really. Yeah. And so how did that how, how did that turn out? And how did you, how are you related? Because uh, physically, you don't really look similar. We don't look similar. <laughs> at all. Yeah, we're, we're related by marriage. So I'm uh, married to his cousin basically yeah <laughs> no we don't look so well do we <laughs> yeah so you married into the family and then yeah. uh you met ryan in maine we went on a trip so i i, I he could have swore that we met before that but um yeah we went on a trip like a work trip in maine and we hung out for a couple months there and we worked really hard and you know it didn't really start there he did talk about fishing and hunting but we were pretty much there based on uh a job that we were on there so we didn't have much free time as far as going in outdoors and stuff. But later on, I'd meet up with him and he'd always be telling me about his adventures outdoors, you know, and um, right away, it kind of sparked an interest in me. I mean, I, I was little, I was riding dirt bikes a lot back then and I wanted to kind of get out of it because, um, you know, I didn't want to hurt myself. And so I, I needed to change hobbies. And as it is, you, you did have some accidents. I had some accidents. Yeah, I, I dislocated my shoulder like eight times and I, I got really lucky though, man. I could have gotten really hurt and um somehow i schemed out of that and uh so i wanted to change my hobby change focuses and hunting was like a pretty good fit for me you and i think some it could, adventure just not adventure, adventure like in ryan's gonna... hunts you know he was always talking about backpacking so backpacking went right alongside of that and i had a big interest in backpacking as well and and so i kind of did a crash course on that and you know we really didn't hunt together at first at all like i i think i would ask i asked him a million questions you know but um <laughs> I would just research also online and then I got all my stuff together and <clears throat> would just go on like backpack hunts, you know, yeah. I started off backpack hunt. I never really did any type of other hunting other than backpack hunting. And so, but you know, along with that came like getting into shape because I've always been a good hiker ever since I started hiking and whatnot. But I realized really quick that like, oh, you can even be better if you get into shape. So when I was younger, I lifted weights and I was pretty big and I was kind of stout. And I felt pretty tough, but, um, you know, when I started doing cardio, it pretty much changed the way I looked at that. Cause I hated running, man. My body type, you've seen me, mm -hmm. I'm no, I'm not, I don't have a runner body type, right? Me either. Not really. But, um, <laughs> dude, uh, I started running and I got like kind of obsessed with it. I'm sure part of it, Ryan and J Ryan, um, and those guys were running a bit back then. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I was like, oh man, maybe I should start doing some running. And I realized how slow I was. And then, uh, but, uh, Basically, I got better and better and better. And, you know, there's been years where I've been addicted to running. Like oh, yeah. maybe a couple of years ago, I was running 10 miles twice a day. I mean, I was I was pretty into it. And just <clears throat> not only for uh, like hunting, it's just yeah. in general, like general health. And um, so not only that, I know I'm rambling on, but um, like also like eating wise. And I still don't eat all that healthy as you, as you probably saw. <laughs> you video, do like your sugar. Right? Right. But, um, it's, it's loads better than what it was. I mean, and a lot of that was from Ryan and Hillary, you know, basically talking about food and all these mm -hmm. different subjects. And I just started focusing on that a bit more. And so I still do, uh, eat other stuff, but I am a lot better than I used to be. Yeah. So as a whole, you know, it's, it's definitely improved my life and not only mine, my family. So we all try to eat a bit healthier. And so, so how did the how first hunt with Ryan go? Uh, first time in rock with Ryan was Montana. And I think that was like 2015, maybe mm -hmm. I was kind of going and I was trying to get into photography still. And I was doing a little bit of video and we kind of just ran around the Hills. He had a, um, he had a, a antelope tag an elk tag 
and he had a mule deer tag and I had a mule deer tag, but you know, we pretty much ran around mountains there and um, I kind of got a taste of the photography and videography there. And that's kind of where it really got more serious for me. 2015, dude, that's not that long ago. And and here you are like taking sick photos, um, you know, and, and now you're, you're, you're breaking, you know, you're coming onto the scene in the hunting industry, a yeah. little more and it's pretty cool to see because you know I, I see kind of the up and coming talent that you are and 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 then seeing what you're capable of in the mountains and in the woods and all of that right. you've got this package going that's that's cool how did you you know i asked you this so i kind of know the answer but for the audience how did you uh figure out photography you know and, and then and then and then in the hunting <clears throat> space like what uh, and what are the steps you took to learn? Because I know I know you did learn some things from like Drake and some others. Like walk me through yeah. this. Man, I think a lot of things what you learn through photography is like the eye, you know, like to figuring out what's a deep, what's a good photo. Photography wise, I got um, really so being out hunting um, since 2009, I got really into wildlife because I would see them all I was hunting. And I would be telling my family about it, my friends, and I wanted to kind of show them a little piece of it. So I started carrying a camera. That's that's why I want to film. I wanted to show people what I was seeing. Right. Because you have like all these amazing experiences out there and all these things that are just crazy that you just a normal, typical person wouldn't see. And you want to just show, you know, show the people, you know, what, what it is, like your family and your friends and just anybody that will watch it really. But it's a cool thing to be out there and see that stuff. And then, um, so then so, you, you decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to dive in and get a camera and start doing this. I did. Yeah. So I upgraded cameras. I had a camera and I've had a camera since basically, um, I bought a camera for my wife, like, uh, mid two thousands and I mm-hmm. kind of stole it from her a bit and right. I would take it out photographing. And so then I, I upgraded to a camera. Yeah. Bought your wife a camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Double <laughs> gift. Right. Um, yeah. So then I, you know, I bought a camera and I started carrying it around on these hunting trips and, um, you know, and I, I had taken some animals down. So I got in some animals and I just, you know, realized like, man, I really love going on these trips. I like trying to capture these moments. And um, yeah, that's kind of how the carrying a camera on the trips went. And so how did it go from that to, you know what, I might want to be like a recognized photographer in the hunting industry. That's pretty natural for, um, for me. Like I just wanted, I really, I just wanted to get better. Like I just kept seeing, like I'd see people's uh, photos and I was like, man, that's awesome. And so it would, I would kind of bring my own style to it, but it would kind of tweak my interest into being like, Oh, I need to think about doing this or doing that. And, yeah. um, <clears throat> so there's a lot of people out there, a lot of guys that love the, the same way you do. They're, they're part-time photographers for fun and, and for, you know, they're growing their skill set and, and all of that. And they'd love to break into the hunting industry or let's say snowboarding or mountain biking or, or maybe even it's family photography, whatever it is. They, they want to take that skill and and move it into a mainstream place or maybe make money off of it to, to pay for more camera gear or hunts, whatever. Right. How did you get your first paid job and what was it? Um, it was, I, it, I had some, I had some mentorship uh, that went along the way. Because my, one of my first jobs was a commercial for a CrossFit gym. Oh, really? Yeah. And then a couple of things like that. I did like four or five commercials, which I'm never going to mention because I don't want people to find them. <laughs> <laughs> and then later I got some actual, I started filming some actual hunts and then I turned those into some films and those went into full draw film tour. And then from there, you know, it went on, but the first stuff wasn't even hunting related, but it was money. Right. I was making money from it. So my first break, probably I sold some photos, some uh, photos to, to companies, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, and, what uh, companies? Uh, well, REMF. So, okay, I, Rocky I Mountain Elk Foundation. There. Yeah. And it was, I really didn't. Was it um, Elk? It was Elk Photos, yeah. Nice. And it, I really didn't submit many to many. Like, I didn't submit a lot. Like, I just yeah. submitted to certain, a few companies, right? And I had some success there. So I was like, all Were right, well. Were you approached or did you just cold contact people or how did this go down? No, I, I researched it. Like, I found out who I was supposed to contact and mm-hmm. where I could submit. And I and I also sent some samples, you know, because I, I didn't I wanted them to know that, like, oh, this guy might be worth looking at, I guess. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, send some samples and then open up communication there. And so basically, I'm on their call list. But yeah, 
Um, getting good. So like um, getting better at photography. Like I've been fortunate enough to run into photographers out in the field. Mm-hmm. And like literally some of it's through social, like some of them are really well known. So like I'll just run up behind him and tap him on the shoulder. I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? And I'll keep going and I'll go photograph. And he'll come to me later and he's like, hey, do I know you? And I'm like, no, but uh, we know each other from social. And then I'm like, oh, my name's James. He's like, oh, a sly, you know, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, you meet. And so you meet these guys and within, you know, you're nice and everybody's cool. And uh, within 15, 20 minutes, I'm like, you know, what do you do, dude? Like, what's your, cause they're good. You know, these mm-hmm. guys have been doing it a long time. They've been, they're, you know, they're pros. And so I'll be like, you know, what is your, what is your thought process? What's, you know, what are your, what are you shooting for? What, and, and, what is your method? And of, of these guys, like who, who's probably the most influential for you so far? Oh man, I don't, I don't really have one person that's influential. I take, mm-hmm. I take a lot from a lot of different people, man. I mean, <clears throat> there's guys out there that, um, that prop, you know, that probably never even heard of me that I'm like, dude, I've been looking at their photography forever. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, some well, of them. Well, here's it. your chance to thank a couple people. N- name some well, names. Well, I've talked to you, I've talked to you about Jay, you know, <laughs> Jay Bear. So, yeah. um, it's cool to find, you know, for you to say how cool of a dude he is. Cause yeah, Jay is um, freaking awesome. Yeah. And I've seen his photos forever and, um, you know, he does all types of different stuff and it's inspiring though. You see people like that and their photos Mm -hmm. and it inspires you to try to get better as well. You know, I think that that's, that's an important tool for social media. You know, if you wanted to use social media in a positive light, I mean, inspiration is probably one of the top notches. So, yeah. And then also having that connection, like you wouldn't probably see his work much other than like an ad or something normally, but you get to watch his work, you know, on, in, on social, on yeah. social media. Yeah. Yeah, so absolutely. Cause helps out. when a company buys a photo from you, they don't put your name on it. And so people don't know it's you, you know, right. Which is cool but, for the dudes that um, are already done that are in it and they've made it. It's cool. Cause I like that. I like yeah. being like that guy that took that photo and I don't really care that people don't know that it's me. Yeah. Right. But um, when you're trying when, to get a job, I, you're right. You but when you're trying to get a job and you're kind of coming up, you're trying to, you're trying to get your work out there, right? Yeah. You want to be, you want to get your work out. You want it to be seen. And, um, yeah, that's, yeah, it's definitely. Okay. So, so what, 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 what has been your highest paying job so far? It wasn't <laughs> say, from Ryan and I, cause we're too cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, I've gotten some jobs, uh, you know, last year, but my, honestly, my best money has been through AMF. Like basically okay. selling a single photo for a good chunk of money. Yeah. It's pretty, it's, it, uh, it doesn't get much better than that, I guess. I mean, That's cool. all you're doing is transferring a file over the photo you've already taken. And, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, I think the business end of the photography is the part that is really tough. You know, you gotta, it takes some learning and some mentorship, like guys coming along and being like, well, this dude needs some help for sure. You know what I mean? uh, (laughs) Well, I think there's a lot of guys that are, you know, want to figure out how to kind of monetize the thing they love doing. And there's a lot of talented people, but turning it into a career or into something that generates even some level of income, that's, it's, it's a competitive space. Really, is. It is competitive. Um, Nobody's going to come looking. And that's what I noticed too. So in the beginning, I thought, man, if I keep my head down and I get, get good enough, somebody it will come and it'll happen. And it just, it, it doesn't and it won't. So uh, <laughs> you have to, um, you really got to advocate for yourself, advocate for yourself and like um, reach out to people and talk to people and kind of get out in the space. Well, I was telling you this, um, you know, when we were out there hunting, we were getting ready to go home and Ryan's telling me about free falling. And, uh, you know, and, uh, uh, Jerry McGuire and, and here we are kind of chatting and I was telling you, I'm impressed with what you do with a camera. There's a lot of guys though, that I'm impressed with what they can do w- when it comes to photography and a camera. Oh, for sure. But for me, what really set you apart or made you, you know, unique was your ability to do the hunt as well. Not everybody can do it. Not everybody's physically capable. Not everybody's mentally capable not everybody has the the knowledge and know-how when it comes to gear like ryan and i didn't have to tell you anything about backpacking no and that's that's another thing too is i'm really so if you're going to do a hunt like this and you're going to photograph it i mean for sure you need to be prepared you need to go through your gear and you you need to know what to bring and 
you're going to be carrying it all on your back, you know, and you don't want to be the guy that goes out there and they're like, oh man, I don't have my rain gear yeah. or there's, you know what I mean? Some crucial piece of gear that you need. So there's a lot of planning that goes involved with that. And the other thing too but, is um, that, like I said, when mm-hmm. I first started hunting uh, with, you know, when, with like Ryan kind of giving me the scoop on how it was, I started doing that type of hunt in the beginning. And so it became really clear really quickly that you needed to be on, on the ball when it comes to planning hunts and, and the gear you're using. Yeah. Just preparing and being, you know, responsible in the fact that you're responsible for yourself out there. And I've, and I've done these hunts, I've done hunts without Ryan and they go the same way. You know, it's not like Mm -hmm. when I, it's when I don't go with Ryan, it's still a grind. It's still, you're still busting, uh, you know, the thing is, is you're still an asset. You're, you're an asset to the whole camp in terms of finding an animal spotting game, you know, packing, you know, meat out, all that kind of stuff. You, you're able to contribute. And that, that's what I was getting at too, is, you know, you're not just a photographer, but because like I said, there's a lot of guys who can do that. It's the other part. Uh, in fact, the backcountry stuff for sure. In you know, at Gritty, we have our intern, Brad Hunt here and Brad is a super awesome elk caller. Uh, he's (laughs) also a killer. He finds a way to get it done. He's an archery hunter you know i think he's killed uh something like 16 bulls in 16 years or something stupid like that and he's like 12 so that's impressive so (laughs) and so as i've watched brad do this stuff um i sat there and i'm like well i can teach brad to film and use a camera or i can try to teach a cameraman to be a hunter and uh, what i found is uh brad is an eager learner and a hard worker and he's been learning how to to edit and, and he'll learn more about how to film. Well, what I found with some, some guys, they, they can't find the animal, you know, on the mountain. And then, then they can't put the camera on the animal cause they can't see it on the mountain. Cause they don't have enough years of experience behind some optics, you know, to do that, or they're not adding in any value at all to the hunt at all. They're more of a liability moving at the right. wrong time, talking at the wrong time. And what I found is man, not to sell a, a photographer short, or a video guy short, but I feel like it's almost easier to teach a hunter, a super skilled hunter, how to do photography and video than it is to teach a guy that's really good at photography and video to learn the sort of things that Brad has learned over a lifetime spent in the (coughs) woods. And so those two things, like to find the blend of the guy that can do it all, kind of like where you're at, it's just not very common. Yeah. I mean, I could definitely, I definitely could see that for us. It's pretty second nature. I mean, uh, the hunting part of it, it seems common sense, but when you get somebody that hasn't done it before, you really start scratching your head, I guess. <laughs> I mean, well, that's and, stuff and like you said, sure. you know, you, you haven't been hunting for 40 years or anything, but right. you have spent quite a bit of time with one, I think one of the best hunters <laughs> in the United States or oh, in the sure. world with, in the form of Ryan Lampers. And so yep there's a learning curve that you got to shave because of your, your time spent with someone like that. Same for me. Right. Like I've been able to hunt with a lot of people from Corey Jacobson, you know, to Ryan Lampers, to Cole Kramer, right. guys that are, are, you know, just know even Bart Lancaster, you know, I've learned so much watching and observing these unique and, and talented and just guys that have vast years of experience. And it's, it's, it's changed that learning curve for me. I know things now and I see things now in the woods that I didn't before. And so, you know, uh, I got to witness what you're, what you're doing when you're out there. It was cool. So that, that, that is a unique and different thing that you bring to the table. The one thing you really, really aren't really very good at yet is video. Yeah. I I noticed that when I was watching that, I was like, uh, you know, you frame, I, you frame the shots really well and you captured the angles like beautifully. Like people don't know. There's a few times where you're behind the camera and without you, yeah. there, there would be entire parts missing of like the stock. You filmed me shoot that buck. Yeah. I my did, buck. Yeah. That was really brilliantly f- filmed. The angle <laughs> you got in the right spot. You filmed the right, yeah. a- like how I would have liked to have filmed it. You did it, and I didn't have to teach you any of that. I think that well, I was pretty from- stoked. I saw that. I was like, "Oh, I'm glad I got that." You That's know? legit work, yeah. right? It's really yeah. good. Uh, it really comes along the lines of um, more, more like just time spent behind, like the angles and and what's attractive. You got that figured out. It's right. It's more of of like running a video camera in general. Right. 
Yeah. I think, uh, I think a lot of companies are leaning toward that. They want someone who can both photograph and video and video. Yeah. I would like to, uh, but that's my way of saying, James, let's start having you do more video. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, you know, this year I am going to start breaking out and do it. I know that I know, uh, it's, you know, it's leaning that way and I, I definitely want to try both, you know, I want to do the photo thing, but I, I wouldn't mind running video as well. Yeah. It's going to take some getting used to and, and, uh, some learning for sure. Yeah. I have a hard time, um, doing both in usually what I find is most guys are either good at one or the other. Um, I've seen that too. Yeah. P- props to, uh, Luke Dusenberry at, at mountain ops who's with yeah, he's awesome. on New, Ze- New Zealand, he yeah. can take photos and he can yeah. video. He, he's one of those guys does it all. Adam Foss can do both, you know, do both. Yeah. Jay Byer <clears throat> can't run a video camera or I couldn't <laughs> say can't just, I didn't see him run one and I don't yeah, know that both. he's much of a video guy. So, uh, it's just interesting, you know, it's a stitch. It's a, they're, they're, I mean, they're really similar in ways, but they're, they're pretty different in ways too. Yeah. You know, um, there's certain niches and when you're shooting photos that, you know, you have to have, and there's, there's certain things in video where it's way more slack, you know, like if you miss focus in a video for a sec, it's not that big of a deal. Whereas in a photo it's, that's gone forever. Yeah. But also there's certain techniques in video that you need to learn that you just don't have with uh, photos. So, yeah. I mean, there's, well, there's this, definitely, um, there's definitely skills in both of those, you this, know, happening. This brings me to the post edit question because, uh, I really like what you can do in post with your photos, give them different yes. looks and feels. How do you, how did you figure that out? How do you know how to do that? <clears throat> that's trial and error, man. That's uh that's a lot of years of editing and because the editing, there's guys who just take a photo like Jay Byer and does almost no editing. Yeah, I know. I don't know how he does it. When I see his photos, man, they're badass. It's I think it's pretty rare to find somebody that doesn't touch it and can stand out. Yeah. Uh, I think Jay's, he's, he's he's absolutely unique in that way. Like, yeah, he's he's been I think he's probably been doing it all he's been so probably long. Been a long time. Back back he's older than he's older than dirt like me. So he uh he, <laughs> he he had to before digital camera, before you know right, you didn't right. have exactly. these options. And so for, and for me I kinda came up with the editing. You know, like mm-hmm. I came up with photograph and editing and um I, I like that aspect of it. I like getting home and seeing the photos and seeing what I can do with them and putting my twist on them and my little touch on them. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's taken a lot of um, trial and error. You know, like I said, if I look at photos and I first started, I'm like, oh, I just want to, you know, like, what were you yeah. thinking? Like, why did you do that? And yeah. But you learn as you go. And, um, you know, my style, I think my style is always changing, though, because I'll always see other guys doing stuff. And I'm like, man, that looks really cool. And I'll try to add that little niche to my resume, basically, because I have all these different editing techniques that I can use. Mm-hmm. And um, I like to just add as many as I can to that, because different situations, like um, when I edit certain photos, like it, that edit will not work for a different, you know, set of photos. Usually yeah. some of them will, but most of them, you know, you have to kind of change it up a bit. So it's kind of unique to the situation. I mean, but yeah, did you, did I really take, enjoy that part of it though. Did you take any online classes, any YouTube videos? Like how did you <clears> learn <throat> how to start doing it? Did you take some- um, editing? Oh yeah. So editing, I have buddies. So I have a good buddy that's a photographer as well. And, um, he doesn't do it for a job or anything, but he's really good and he's really good technically with a camera. And so um, a lot of times I call him up and I'm like, what's up, man? What do you think about this? Or I'll send him a photo. And we just did that over the years. And then also, you know, watching YouTube videos. I've watched plenty of YouTube videos on how to edit. And another thing that I think that's helped me come along is I don't only focus on like hunting photography, like um, yeah. wildlife, yeah. portrait flash photography extreme like it sports, all had motocross, uh, was that, was motocross that? <laughs> extreme sports i never did much i did a little bit of motocross driving, but not much i was yeah. more into jumping them than uh, photographing <laughs> them. But, um uh but yeah all different types of photography and lighting situations and it just in the end it's going to make you a better overall photographer you know mm-hmm. i mean just not limiting yourself to just one thing i take my camera out i love i mean one of the i mean I love taking portraits of my kids, you know, and it's like, it's personal then. And when I'm editing them, it's personal. And so even when I take photos of my friends or something, it's like a thing that I I'm passionate about and I want to make it look good. Like if I send you a portrait that I took, Mm -hmm. you know, I want you to like it. That's my thing. But it's, I got to like it too, though. But I mean, it's it's something that I think that you would like, you know what I mean? The way I edit it or the way I put a twist on it or that's cool. Yeah. You know, you went through your lenses with me. 
Are those yep. uh, all, all Canon lenses, all Canon glass? That's all Canon glass, yeah. And then how do you, you know, carry your camera during the hunt? I know, that, you know, one of the, my pet peeves is guys put their camera in their backpack and they walk around all day. I did, I did that for a while and it just doesn't work. You get back and you're like, man, I didn't take any photos because it's a pain in the butt to get it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, certain situations, you know, throw it in the pack maybe for a second, but most of the time it's on a cotton carrier strap on my camera, um, on my backpack. So it's out all the time. So how do you mount it to your backpack? It's a, it's called a cotton carrier cotton strap carrier. It's, it's similar to that peak design strap that's out too. And it mm -hmm. kind of straps to your backpack strap. And yep. so your basic, your camera can, uh, clamp right on the peak design and have you yep. for like four years. Yep. And it's the same, same, uh, it's like, it's like a different, uh, design, but same concept Cut basically. Tail. And it holds it right there. Yep. And, um, but so yeah, it's on your backpack strap all the time. It's on my backpack strap. Yep. And, um, you need, you need it out. You'll take a lot of photos. You'll take way more photos. If it's in your pack. You just, it just won't happen. Okay. And then, um, how do you store it in your pack when you are putting it in your pack, like your lenses and stuff like that? You're actually here. <laughs> I, I wrapped it up in my, uh, puffy jacket. <laughs> Real technical. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, what do you do with the, um, uh, I mean, I can, I can tell you some other gear that I bring. I bring, um, filters. So like polarizer filter or an ND filter polarizer is a game changer. If you go on a hunt and it's crazy sunny all day and, you don't have a polarizer, you know, you should have one on there. It makes a big difference. And, um, okay. having a polarizer, um, I for film, I pretty much run a three stop or six stop ND filter ND filter. Yeah. So for film, uh, ND is a must have until, until it gets too dark. I'm yep. always running one of the two on a 2.8. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So yeah, definitely your filters are important. Um, you know, some cleaning supplies, always bring a blower, I bring a couple um, cleaning rags, <clears throat> you know, a weather cover. And also, um, I, I, you know, I don't hear a lot talked about is changing glass out in the elements. So, um, you know, you got to be pretty careful. I've been, I'm really careful with my camera gear and I've literally got back from a trip and had dust all over my sensor. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's kind of, you just got to be quick about it and um, obviously try not to do it when it's, you know, pouring rain or snowing. But I'm the worst, dude. Like, dude, you I, do it, you do it really good and you're, you're gnarly with it. You go, you go all out with it and you're shooting a mirrorless, right? Yes. So mirrorless, there's no mirror over your sensor, yeah. at least on um, mine. Oh, you know, creepy. there's a mirror over the sensor just, when you're changing lenses. I go all in. In fact, we had, I have had a couple of problems with stuff on the sensor. I'm, I think, did you help me? Maybe it wasn't you. Uh, there, you did help me clean a couple of lenses because I, I yeah. could not figure out how to get the spots off of them. Um, yeah. Man, I can get away. Like movie, people expect to see a splat on the lens. It, you're right. in the heat of oh, the yeah. moment. It's, uh, it's annoying and it's distracting, but I feel like it's gritty, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. But if I have a photograph, I don't want to know. I don't want to see that on there. It doesn't add to the feel of the photo in any yeah, way. Yeah, it does. And, Where and in the not... film, if there's like four spots on the lens because you're filming it, but it, it's raining, it, people forgive it. You know, they do. Yeah, and you don't see it. You don't see it as much when if you you know if you're providing somebody art to hang on the wall, they're gonna they're not gonna like a dust spot on it. Yeah. Or if um if you're hanging something at like a trade show or something, you know, they're probably not gonna love that. But you can fix it in post. It's just um, something to keep in mind and um you know try to keep a wrap under but you definitely are going to need to change lenses and you're going to need to um you know sometimes even carry two camera bodies man i think that's something too to have a zoom lens you do right and it's a zoom lens and um you know maybe a wide or a, a standard type zoom on like <clears> on our hunt lens. you know really the uh long lens never came off of a uh off of my camera body until yeah. i needed to remove the teleconverter yeah. you know, on my one to 400 and that's when things get messy. And, uh, you know, I end up just throwing the teleconverter in my pocket without, a, yeah, totally. I don't know where the thing is. And, <clears throat> uh, right. but I do try to make sure the sensor stays okay, but that's what yep. gets me into trouble, but I'll change, you know, uh, having two separate camera bodies does really allow me to kind of keep the keep the sensor from being exposed. exposed. It still yeah. gets dust in it. Cause I'm just, I'm just dragging that camera through the woods. I'm just <clears throat> oh, for sure. I'm yeah, tossing it in the shelter. I'm yeah. tossing it on the ground. Like <laughs> I am not gentle with any of my gear. And, and yeah. the same is true with my camera gear. Like other photographies go with me and they're like, I cannot believe what you, how, how you treat your stuff. Oh, totally. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I was constantly like, oh, don't step on Brian's camera. <laughs> yeah, and I was making fun of you like you were cleaning it every 10 minutes, your camera every no, 10 man. minutes. <laughs> oh, we got the blower out again. Uh, yeah, dude, I'm constantly blowing off my my, uh, my lens. And, well, it was nice because yeah. toward, toward the, the second half of the hunt, I was just handing you my camera. Well, while you're at it, just, just do this one too. Up. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I definitely like keeping a clean camera. I like keep it just like so it's running smoothly and um, – yeah. But yeah, I mean, I definitely, you know, if it starts raining or something, I mean, I, I let it, it gets wet, you know, it gets, it gets pounded by the rain or the snow. And um, let's say somebody wants to buy some of your work. Can, can just a regular person come out and. Yeah, actually I've sold more work from Instagram probably than any other platform. I do have a website. <clears throat> I've been using it more for companies and providing companies with um, like ways to, uh, I can, you know, provide them folders and stuff for marketing and whatnot, but you can order off my website or you can hit me up on Instagram. So what's your website? My website is, um, www.sylvesterphotos at dot com. Do you have a link on Instagram? There is a link on Instagram. Yeah. And you can go there and look, I need to update it. I need to put some more photos on there. It's tough. I got thousands. I mean, I just got to put more on there, but yeah, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. I've definitely got some sold. beautiful wildlife shots as well. If someone goes on to your Instagram, what's your handle? Uh, it's underscore Sly underscore Sylvester. So that's where the Sly came in. I like guess, Stallone. Too. Like Stallone, right? <laughs> it is a cool last name. Yep. <laughs> okay, so uh, underscore Sly underscore Sylvester. Yeah, that's the handle at underscore. So people can go find you there and click the website or use the one they can click the show notes uh, that we put on the, on the description here on our YouTube channel, just go below and you can click the link too for those that are watching it on YouTube. Uh, for those that are listening on iTunes or another iPod, you can always go to the briancall.com website, click on uh, podcasts and it'll give you the, the library of all the podcasts on YouTube and you can just, uh, click this one and get to the description uh, or just go straight to our YouTube channel. But Sly, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, Ryan and I have some fun plans uh, for 2020. So yeah, man. hopefully, I, I, hopefully we're doing a, a, a repeat with you there because this stuff you captured was phenomenal. It was beautiful. So hope, hope we can, uh, get that because what people don't know is you also have a day job uh, which is really what pays the bills yep. uh, you are uh you basically work at a hospital yeah what yeah. exactly do you do you stab people no no i'm like i'm oh. basically like a nur- uh, nurse assistant oh yeah so i work at a hospital i've been working there you know for the last four five years six years yeah yeah and so it kind of gives me a lot of leeway into being able to get time off when i need to so i can work a lot when i need to or i can be off and do some hunts too when Dude, I need i'm to. telling you you are primed you are primed <laughs> to to make a career shift you know yeah keep, I, yeah keep definitely, I definitely in, both, to, in sure. both spaces for a while get an income from both sides and until you can build this side up you know i would love to see you do more uh outdoor hunting photography and and stuff like that you're you're yeah. uh you're a, a great you know, you're, you're adding a lot of value to this community. So it's super cool. Yeah. I appreciate you having me on here, man. And I, hopefully we can line up some stuff for next year, you know? Yep. Yep. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning into the podcast. Uh, go check out Sly's work. Uh, and, uh, thanks for tuning in. And as always stay gritty friends. <laughs>